Hey guys, so in this video, I'll be comparing the GPS accuracy and the battery life of the tried and true Garmin Fenix 3 HR with the all new Apple Watch Series 2 released just the last week. So on the screen, you can see my test setup, a Garmin Argon 600 handheld GPS on the right side, designed for hiking and outdoor activities. Um, it is my reference GPS. I used the Argon 600 as my reference because it is able to lock on to quite a few satellites, even inside my house, uh, where neither the Phoenix 3 HR nor the Apple Watch 2 is able to lock on to a single satellite. So I can be sure that the Oregon 600 have better GPS signal reception than the two smartwatches. And both the Garmin Oregon and the Garmin Phoenix 3 HR, uh, I know have the GPS plus GLONASS capability, so they're able to lock onto uh, a lot more satellites than just GPS signal alone. And uh, Apple didn't release any detail about their GPS unit so we don't know if it actually have a GLONASS or not. And in the middle of this photo is actually the Apple Watch Series 2. On the left side is the Garmin Fenix 3 HR. Now I didn't actually mount them on the handlebar. I uh, wore them on my left and right wrist just like any other smartwatch should be. I used the building optical heart rate sensor for both devices and I actually turned my iPhone off so the Apple Watch can only rely on its own building GPS to function for a fair and square comparison. Now both watches were fully charged and set to bike or outdoor cycle mode for the cycling GPS accuracy and battery test. And now let's take a look at the test results from this ride. And here is a post ride photo showing the summary of the ride. The total elapsed time is approximately 1 hour 48 seconds, give or take 5 seconds for pressing start on each of the devices. As we can see, the reference GPS, the Garmin Oregon 600, showed the total riding distance as 13.10 miles, while the Phoenix 3 HR recorded the ride as a total of 13.12 miles. And finally, the Apple Watch Series 2 recorded the ride, which is shown on the bottom of the watch as 12.99 miles. So the Phoenix 3 HR had a difference of only 0.02 miles compared to the reference. And the Apple Watch Series 2 had a difference of 0.11 miles compared to the reference. Now 0.02 miles is only about 2-3 to three seconds of a difference when you are riding and 0.11 miles is only about 10-15 to 15 second, uh, seconds of the difference compared to the reference GPS. So in theory, if you do a 3 hour ride, the accuracy difference is only about 6-9 to nine seconds for Garmin Phoenix 3 HR and 30 seconds to 45 seconds difference for the Apple Watch Series 2. It is safe to conclude at this point that the Garmin Fenix 3 HR won the cycling GPS accuracy test in this regard, despite the dif difference being ever so slightly small. It is also worth mentioning um, that the recording interval for Garmin Fenix 3 HR and the Garmin Oregon 600 is set to 1 second, and it is unknown for Apple Watch Series 2 since this watch does not have a setting to adjust recording intervals. All the devices have the auto pause feature turned on and the Apple Watch 2 have no such settings to disable it in the cycling mode while the other two devices can. So now we move on to the next section which is the data collection and export capabilities for both devices. So on top of the screen is the datasets available with Garmin Fenix 3 HR and on the bottom of the screen is Apple Watch Series 2. I think it is clear that right off the bat, Garmin Fenix 3 HR trumps the Apple Watch Series 2. I also have a ANT Plus speed and cadence sensor that's paired with the Fenix 3 HR 
So it is able to accurately record both speed and cadence data from just my pedaling on the bike. The Phoenix 3 HR is also able to pair with many other sensors, such as the football foot pod for running and walking, a external temperature sensor, many ANT Plus compatible power meters for cycling, and of course any ANT Plus heart rate strap, including the new ones designed for swimming and triathlon from uh, Garmin. The Phoenix 3 HR also have a built-in barometer and a built-in temperature sensor as evident in the screenshots shown. If you have an Apple Watch Series 2, you are pretty much out of luck with data recording. The only thing you can pair with Apple Watch Series 2 is a Bluetooth Smart heart rate strap. And that's pretty much it. I even tried to pair a Bluetooth Smart speed and cadence sensor with the Apple Watch Series 2, but unfortunately it was not able to detect it at all. The other area that Phoenix 3 HR totally beats the Apple Watch Series 2 is the ability to export all those data recorded to any fitness websites and to track your fitness progress or um, any fitness analytical softwares for detailed fitness analysis and comparison. And Apple Watch Series 2? Nope, nothing, nada. You can't export any data from it nor see any detailed data charts. The best you can do is probably a screenshot of the map of your ride and some basic info like average speed, distance, and weather. You can send a pathetically looking hashtag email or text to your friend in the contact list and that's pretty much about the only thing it can share. I know, it's very sad. So the clear winner here once again is the Garmin Fit 3 HR. And uh, lastly, let's move on to our final test, the battery test. So after the one hour ride, I immediately snapped a photo of both watches showing the battery status. The Phoenix 3 HR on the left showed 92% battery juice left and the Apple Watch Series 2 on the right side showed only 80% battery juice left. And when you do some simple math, you'll find that Apple Watch will last about only 300 minutes, which is about 5 hours, before it completely dies. And that's if you use its building GPS instead of your iPhone's GPS for outdoor tracking. While the Phoenix 3 HR, on the other hand, will actually last a whopping 750 minutes, which is about 12 hours and 30 minutes non-stop before it dies. And that's pretty impressive for a smartwatch. But I would like to say that for most casual riders and cycling activities less than 100 miles, you'll probably be fine tracking with the Apple Watch Series 2 as most people will have their smartphone with them during their ride, so the watch doesn't have to use its built-in GPS. However, you won't have any data to export or share with the Apple Watch Series 2, nor will you get cycling-specific sensors to record any performance data besides heart rate. I did my first 100-mile century ride in New York a few months ago, wearing my Garmin Phoenix 3 HR and it recorded the entire 7 plus hours of the ride without a single hiccup. And for that, I'm forever grateful of my Garmin Phoenix 3 HR. So from a pure performance point of view, the Garmin Phoenix 3 HR is the clear winner over Apple Watch Series 2 in my comparison video and uh, this video is specifically addressing cyclists' concerns, and I hope you get some useful information out of this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask or share in the comment section below, and please like this video if you think it is helpful to you. And thanks again, guys, and take care.